Hello and welcome to another build guide, and today I'm going to be showcasing this uh, Arcane Breach mage character. So Arcane Breach um, is probably one of the better clear skills in the game right now. And um, the scaling of his skill is pretty significant um, with a few tricks, and I will be showcasing a few of those in this video. Um, overall, the the playstyle of this character is very satisfying because you place down a huge area of effect and everything pretty much dies in that area. And yeah, it, it, it kind of reminds me of the um, heavy arrow build from Huntress, but it's just... Um, I'm not sure if I could say this is more safe than that character, but it's definitely up there because it, it has a lot of um, layers of defense as well that I will be showcasing. Um, <clears throat> As for specializations, you can pretty much use all of them for each of their own purposes. So I would say the Arcane Commander is used for the Great Forge, because he has the most defense as well as damage. Philomatic um, Caster is uh, used for the Slum Temple. And then the Devoted Shula is then used for just battlefield expeditions. And uh, you're probably wondering why um, you couldn't just use either of these for the Slum Temple. Uh, the teleportation is very, very handy when it comes to the Slum Temple, because uh, the movement speed can get quite annoying and you have to place down these um, weird uh, walls of omen. Um, and it doesn't really work in the Slum Temple, personally. Like, you can definitely just use it if you want to. But for me personally, uh, this one is the best for the Slum Temple, without a doubt. Um, so yeah, let's go over the skills. And first off, let's look at the Arcane Breach. So, in the first um, like one that you want to go up in, it's this one. The Violent Contact. This one is very insane, dude. It is so good. So... The first hit from Arcane Breach that you summoned will deal increased damage through your... or well, it's scaling through your Ancestral Strike damage, and by default you have 300%. Um, and if you pair this uh, with this um, rune right here, with the Nimble Warrior rune, effect rune, you gain so much hit damage out of it, and you can like spam this ability easily. So this node right here is pretty much the only damage source that we have, plus uh, increased area of effect. Um, but yeah, other than that, we are just going for cooldown, more attack speed, which is considered cooldown, and then this one for area, and then the last is pretty much uh, irrelevant, I would say. Like, you don't have to pick these. I, I don't see the reason for picking this up anyway because you're pretty much spamming it and you, the only big thing that you get out of um, the arcane breach is uh, like when you actually hit once with it when you summon it like yeah it, yeah you can stack the damage on top of each other um, like if you have these two going on they can both tick uh, at the same time on a single enemy so it's pretty powerful in that regard. But yeah, uh, multi-breaches, uh, arcane flux, and then the ethereal rift. That's the one that you should be looking into. And then for utility, we're using the ray of obliteration, and then we're using clones. This is probably the best in, um, <clears throat> let's say, in uh, the Great Forge, because uh, when you're playing normally in uh, the Slum Temple or um, the Battlefield Expeditions. Uh, you don't really use these um, other utility skills that much. Uh, <clears throat> so yeah, it's it's just better for... What are you say? Crowd control, I would say. Because you can get this one where you slow enemies down. With uh, this numb um, passive right here. Uh, and oh yeah, there's also a ring that you can get where you can apply elemental weakness onto enemies. 
where they take uh, a certain amount of increased elemental damage. But I currently don't have that, but you can definitely put that on if you want to min-max your character even further. Uh, okay, so rebuff choice is uh, this bad boy right here, the Primal Ancient Ancestral Legacy Staff. That's a long name. And uh, we do not want to use the Primordial version because it kind of kills your damage for skills in your primary and secondary uh, to pretty much zero. Because we do not want to rely on only our rotating crystals around us. That would not be that effective at all. I'm not sure why that's a thing even. Um, but yeah, the reason why we ping this is because um, the Reaver damage gets converted to elemental damage. You get a lot of percent elemental damage. Um, and you get a relatively big amount of um, elemental damage multiplier. Uh, as you can see at the bottom, whenever you deal in central strike damage, you gain elemental fervor, granting you 144% uh, elemental damage multiplier for the next 10 seconds. And then the elemental damage multiplier is equal to your critical strike chance. Um, this is not true, like it's not that big. Uh, I think I have like 50 maybe, maybe 60 or something like that. But that's still a huge multiplier on a build like this. I didn't push it uh, super far because I was kind of falling behind on uh, life and mana leech and I needed both of those. So uh, you could potentially get it up to like 80% or something like that. And that's insanely good. And then another cool thing about this weapon with the Reaper damage is added to elemental damage is that there's a amulet that does the same thing where it says Reaper damage is added to elemental damage instead of skill damage. It gets added twice for some reason. I'm not sure why that's a thing. So this amulet is pretty good. Like it's pretty much mandatory if you want uh, as much damage as possible. Uh, I can just show you how much it does. Yeah, you can see it's pretty significant. Especially if you look at the added elemental damage right here. Uh, 20,000 to 24,000 and then you put it on and then it suddenly gets up to 28 to 37. So this amulet right here is pretty massive if you want as much damage as possible. Uh, but yeah, other than that, uh, Ray of Obliteration is kind of... It's just there for your Great Forge experience and so on, and it can do some sort of crowd control for you, especially when you have Arcane Commander, because uh, in Arcane Commander there's this node right here called Shutdown, so every time your clones crits, um, they then silence the enemy so they cannot really attack anything, and that's very uh, insanely good for defense. Um, what else did we take in Arcane Commander? We took this one, this is kind of whatever, because there's not anything else that is uh, worth picking up. Um, we take this one, not really useful at all, so these are kind of dead notes. We take uh, Arcane Clone MK2, just for the cooldown of Ray of Obliteration clones to... Like, when they stop shooting, they have a tiny cooldown before they can actually shoot again. So this just lowers that amount of cooldown, so it's kind of nice. Just quality of life, pretty much. Uh, then we take mana protection, so you get a bit of armor through your max mana. We take one more max clone from uh, Arcane uh, Chieftain. And then this one right here is one of the big notes. Um, so there's an ultimatum that I went up in to get um, this amount of area damage reduction. And when you get the area damage reduction, you also gain um, area damage. And this is a multiplicative modifier, so you get a bunch of damage out of this one. Um, it, yeah, it, it's just a no-brainer, and that's pretty much the reason why we can get the most damage out of uh, Arcane Commander. As well as defense, because this one right here, the Arcane Pact, um, makes you able to take some of your mana before life when you take damage. So this is very big on this character. And you can pair it with this one as well, uh, for another 13% if it's level 9. It it goes further. 
you can get up uh, get this up to 20% so you take like 45% of your mana before life that's pretty significant so you would probably want to scale a bit of flat mana and increase mana on gear if you can fit it in but yeah that is one of the reasons why it's really really tanky on this character Okay, so other specializations, when you go with the Slum Temple, for example, you want to take this uh, specialization. First note, um, experience Battle Mage, get a bit of uh, crit damage, very nice. Next is uh, a bit of uh, mana regeneration equal to your missing mana. This is alright, nothing too good. Next one is just totem effect, because I'm pretty sure there's nothing else worth taking. Maybe this one, the life shaper, where some of your life leech gets converted to, uh, not converted, but added as uh, extra mana leech. So it can be quite good, but nothing too powerful. And this one just pairs a bit better with uh, your ray of obliteration clones. The next tier. Uh, just ignore that. There's nothing good to come after here. Next one is pretty much something you can ignore as well. Um, like your clones explode after three seconds, but you usually don't kill anything with your uh, temple clones. It's called right? Yeah, temple clones. So just uh, like you can pretty much ignore this uh, tier as well. The next one is just 20% increased elemental damage. Very nice. And this one, obliteration. Le Leyland? Leyland? I'm not sure how you say that. Uh, you gain 35% area increased effect. So that's uh, going to scale your Arcane Breach quite a lot, which is very nice. The last tier is also kind of irrelevant. Uh, especially this one. This one is too much to remove from your character to actually say it's actually worth picking up. So yeah, like it, it, it's called Glacier Cannon, which is living up to its name because you get like twice as much uh, attack speed, but you lose half your life. That's probably never going to be worth it. Maybe in the future, but in, at the moment in the game, it's really not uh, worth picking up. And then for the last specialization, the Devoted Shula. You're going to be picking up this one for increased area size, for more clear speed while doing expedition battlefields. Then you pick this, the speed gauge, uh, for a significant amount of movement speed. This feels really nice when doing battlefield, so you can just uh, get faster over to uh, the next breaches. The next tier is um, pretty irrelevant. You don't get anything out of this. Um, the fourth tier... Uh, let's see, what can you get here? Oh yeah, you get this one where you get a bit of flat elemental damage equal to your missing mana. This can be quite good. Uh, sometimes you get a bit of damage out of this, but it's not too significant. But it does something. Uh, fifth tier, I would say it's pretty irrelevant again. There's nothing too impactful here, so you can pretty much skip this if you want to save some slum points. Um, sixth tier, enemy projectiles passing through Wall of Omen are destroyed, so this is a very nice defensive layer um, if you're against many ranged enemies, so they are pretty much going to get destroyed. Um, and the seventh tier, you get a bit more elemental resistance. I don't think there's anything else uh, worth picking up, so go with that. And the last tier, believe it or not, is kind of irrelevant. Like, you're probably looking at this one, the emblematic caster, and thinking, oh damn, if I have a lot of obliteration emblems, I can do a lot of damage with the uh, Arcane Breach paired with this node right here, Rift of Obliterin. Oblivion. Oblivion? Is that how you say it? Yeah. But, you don't want to waste your time casting another skill just to get, like, three obliteration emblems and then casting it once to deal a tiny bit more damage. Whereas if you spam it like this, you have so much more damage output because of uh, this one right here, the Violent uh, Contact. 
So sadly, these points for Arcane Breach is not very impactful and should not be considered an upgrade when you're uh, running um, Expedition Battlefield. Um, let's take a look at the, the gear real quick. So I, w I just want to go over a downside real quick. And the biggest downside, in my opinion, is that um, it's very expensive. It's it's a really expensive character, because uh, when you look at the attributes, you want to go up in this one, rank 75 in Bravery, because uh, for every Legendary you have, um, you gain 10% increased elemental damage. That's very powerful, um, and you cannot ignore that when you are playing an elemental character, I feel like. So it's pretty much like mandatory, uh, I would say. So yeah, we looked at the amulet. You want to get as much um, life, area size, area effect, crit chance, uh, essential strike chance, um, and then crit damage and essential strike damage. There's a lot of stuff you want. I will put up a list uh, in the video. Um, also something like movement speed is very nice to have. Flat elemental damage on helmet and chest and shoulders, I think. Yeah, it's also a welcome thing to have. And then the helmet could have been, instead of additional clone, it could have been uh, the maximum life multiplier instead. That would probably be way better, in my opinion. Because the clones are just an add-on. Like, it's not really that important with clones. And then for the shoulder attack speed as well. Um, bit of damage to elites, which is very nice. And then you want this legendary effect with max uh, Reaper damage multiplier, because it scales through your Reaper, which is then converted to elemental damage. And we also get uh, rank... Uh, 10 savagery where you get a 15 multiplier and a 10% multiplier. This is very big. This is a 26% multiplicative modifier. And then you add this on top of it, and then it gets to some pretty insane numbers very quickly. You can see if I take it off, uh, I lose like a bunch of damage. The next one, the legendary here can be whatever you want it to be. I just picked this one. It can do some sort of damage, but in my experience, it has been, eh, not too impactful. But yeah, you want attack speed, crit chance, some mana leech. If you can get mana leech on a rare modifier, I mean, an epic modifier, that would be way better. As well as a uh, life leech on the same piece. I really want that. I haven't found a piece with... Uh, Mana Leech and Life Leech on the same piece, and I really wanted that on this character, but I never got that. Um, the gloves, very powerful with the 22% cooldown time. I can highly recommend that. Um, attack speed, crit damage, Life Leech, you name it. Life if you can get it. This ring, uh, kind of good. Nothing too special. And then we have this one right here. I'm just going to go over it now. Oh yeah, uh, I'm going over this uh, sooner or later, just to show you what power it actually grants you. Um, this legendary is going to give you a lot of damage reduction, especially if you level it up uh, to level, let's say, 15. Then it would be... Uh, how much is that? Uh, boop, boop. Uh, 23% uh, of your damage is dealt over 10 seconds instead of taking it instantly, and every time you then use, not use, when you deal and silver strike damage, you then remove the damage taken over time. So this is very insane, and it you pretty much remove the damage taken instantly, uh, as long as there's enemies on the screen. Um, so yeah, right here, area size, area effect, crit chance, attack speed, get this legendary if you can for the Damage taken through your mana instead of life. And then I didn't get the chest to have a legendary effect, pretty much because, um, yeah, I was lazy. So I just went with this one. Still pretty good. Has a lot of defense on it and uh, some damage output. Um, 
But yeah, let's take a look at the essential tree and talk about why this uh, legendary effect is pretty powerful because you gain one rank on every essential gift and that is something that is named on the tree. Let's uh, take a look at it. So I went with this setup right here because it's simply just too good to pass up on. It's even better than the 50% damage multiplier that you get from this one, the Dark Ritual. Um, so yeah, I went with this one, Dark Shadow. I, I rarely use this. You can, but it's not going to be that impactful because the only thing you get is 55% critical strike damage. Nothing too insane. It can be a bit more damage output if you want to press it now and then. Then we get this one. And as you can see, it's level 11 out of uh, 10. And that's because of the ring legendary effect that we had. So you can see that it ranked up uh, by one. But you're probably thinking, that's not very powerful. Uh, why, what, what's the big deal here? The big deal is this node right here. And central gift um, of uh, elemental reward. This one is getting the double effect uh, through that ring. So if I take it off, I will go all the way down to 36% elemental damage. So this one is very, very powerful, and it scales through your combined mastery level of your specializations on your class. So the more you play on all of these, the more damage you will get, and you can get it all the way up to 90% increased elemental damage, which is significantly much damage, or however you want to say it. It's, it's a lot of damage, that's what I'm trying to say. That's a lot of increase for just one node. Uh, but it will take a lot of grinding if you want it to 90% elemental damage. It's kind of unrealistic at this point. You would have to use a lot of time on it. And then the last note is going to be this, where you can scale some elemental damage through your maximum life. So that's just, uh, yeah, the icing on the cake, and it is very powerful. And as well as the other two notes right here, this is also an ancestral gift. So instead of 15% of your uh, maximum life is scaled through uh, elemental damage, it's going to be 16% instead. Very nice, very powerful. Just overall, this is probably the best thing you can put your points into. Maybe there's something else, but I'm not really sure. And then last but not least, let's go over the Nimble Warrior effect rune again and how we trigger it. So the Nimble Warrior is just hands down the best uh, rune in the game. There's like no competition. I, I feel like I have to use it on pretty much every character I play. Except if I want, uh, I don't know, let's say go in a fire damage and then scale, uh, I don't know, Reba damage through it or something like that. It could be powerful that way, but overall, Nimble Warrior effect rune is just the best one. There's, there's no competition. Because you get... Um, your skill damage in your primary slot deals 70% increased damage. That is considered a multiplicative modifier. And when you paired with this one, the rune uh, of Begath, I don't know how you say that, um, and play for long enough, you can over triple the effect of this rune right here, which is pretty nuts. And the only way you can use um, the effect of this uh, rune right here is through uh, changing your setup of your runes, dying, uh, closing the game, or changing characters. So you can like go into, let's say, Expedition, uh, Battlefield, and you think, ah, oh, I'm done with this. And then you want to go into Great Forge, and you still keep your stacks uh, with this effect. So this is very powerful. And uh, Obviously, we're activating it with the Ancestral Strikes, because uh, Ancestral Strikes is something we gain through the Legendary, I mean, the Reaper itself, every time we deal a Critical Strike damage. Uh, and then when we deal an Ancestral Strike uh, damage, we then lose all our stacks. Uh, let me just see what it's called. Uh, whenever you deal Critical Strike damage, you gain Ancestral And, oh. Let me redo that. You gain an ancient legacy stack, granting you 1% ancestral, uh, ancestral strike chance. Oh my god, that's so hard to say. So many words. 
but when you deal and central strike damage, you then lose all your stacks. Um, so yeah, it's pretty powerful. It can do pretty much everything in the game very easily. Not anything that can actually kill this character except for some sort of one shot. I haven't really noticed too many one shots yet, except for maybe um, cataclysms that actually uh, do corpse explosions, um, where they like deal damage through their maximum life, which is just insanely dumb. Um, but yeah. Oh yeah, attributes. I'm, I mean, I already went over this, but I can do that again. We went with the bravery just to get the 10% increased damage for every legendary equipped. And then the savagery and rank 5 in fury just to get a bit more crit chance. You can pretty much pick whatever you want here, but I think the crit chance is more important here because it scales with your reba. Um, like the Reba crit chance and then convert it over to elemental damage multiplier. Uh, there's a lot going on. Um, let's see. Oh yeah, I was almost forgetting about tab uh, 1, 2, and 3. So this is the first tab. You've probably seen this a few times already. So for movement speed, we have 63%. It's not that much. You can invest into more movement speed if you want to. Attack speed, we have a bunch of that, which is very nice to have when we are spamming Arcane Breach. Um, and yeah, let's see. What is my crit chance? So currently my crit chance is 44, because I have like 100 stacks of uh, this bad boy right here at Bravery rank 30. Um, so you have to like get rounded down with 100. Our crit damage is kind of nice. And central strike damage is kind of nice. It could be way bigger. Like you can get, I think on one gear piece, you can get 100% increase in central strike damage. And I think you can get that on the gloves, I'm pretty sure, at the top mod. So you could like sacrifice a bit of attack speed to gain a bunch more in central strike damage, which can be very, very powerful. And for the last tab, I'm just gonna make you look at it. Um, maybe take a look at the area size and increased area effect. So area size is just to make it bigger, obviously. And then area increased effect is considered a increased modifier, like in damage. So area increased effect um, is very powerful for Arcane Breach because it's pretty much a multiplicative modifier. So you want to stack that as much as possible to gain as much damage output uh, as you possibly can. I think I didn't min-max it too well. Like you can go even uh, more heavy than I did if you want to invest the time into it. But I feel like at this point it's kind of overkill. Like I could already do the Great Forge very easily. I could do uh, like the Slom Temple very easily. It's pretty much my best. Slum Temple character as well. It's pretty much the best character I've ever had in this game already. Uh, so yeah, what can I say? But yeah, other than that guys, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video of another build guide, hopefully.